Hi, I'm H.J. Chazelle. We're here at ETS Day 3. We just got through an excellent um, ETS talk that Bill Meehan did, and we're, it, was, it was provocative. <laughs> uh, I like how you really got into this tension between transition versus transformation, and how you tried to bring it home, you know, mm -hmm. with, with things that, is this a transformation or is this a transition? And one of your most compelling examples was the story of the album LP going to the CD right. versus going from your camera to your smartphone. Right. Can you talk a little bit about what is the distinction between a transformation and a transition? Sure. Well, I, th I think there's three elements of transformation, and we'll talk about digital transformation, it's usually about that, is the first is just the technology that we use, and I think that's fundamental. You, it's typically, you're not going to have digital transformation unless you have really good technology. And one of the technologies that I think has emerged over the last maybe five or six, maybe even a little longer, is this notion of a platform, which we use that term platform all the time. But I think of the most common platforms really is in social media. Facebook and, and, then, and then Amazon, of course. And, and, and so the idea of uh, transformation is technology and then behavior. You know, changing behavior is a critical thing of transformation. And again, using the iPhone is, a, is the granddaddy of, or the grandmother, the granddaddy of all transformations is, is that it's changed the way we behave. You see people walking up and down the streets doing all kinds. It's, it's we've changed a different behavior. And, and I like to, and the, and the last one is the business part of it changes too. By having a new technology, a different behavior pattern, and then uh, it could actually turn into a completely new, new business. So I love to use the example of the music industry. And I, I actually have usually, a, I have a, a, you know, a prop. So you talked about albums. Uh, they're analog or CDs or, or, or cassette tapes. They're analog. Analog tape is analog. And then it was transformed. The technology changed from analog to digital. When we went to CDs, it's all digital, right? But then did we really change behavior? Not really, because we still collected CDs, right? We still have cabinets that had CDs in them, or even DVDs. We have these cabinets. But then when we went, what really was transformational is we went from the CD to Alexa or to Spotify. We said, oh, we don't need, to, we don't need CDs anymore. We don't even need. So if I'm in the business of making CD cabinets, I'm out of business. In effect, really, you know, so maybe I, I use them for something else, for my tools or something, but for CDs, I don't need to collect CDs. And I like to use the example when I wanted to hear a particular song. I go into the garage and, and I poke through my box of CDs and if I can find, maybe I can't find it. Well, I might even have that song, but I'll go and buy one on iTunes or Spotify or something like that. So the, so the, the change from analog tape to CD is a digital transition because we've converted from analog to digital but we haven't actually changed our behavior. And I'm in the GIS business, and many, many utilities converted from their paper maps, the, you know, the operating maps that show all the wires and the pipes and everything, and they adopted CAD and then, C, and then, and then GIS. And they converted from paper analog to digital G, GIS. But yet they continued the same old behaviors, printing them out, sending paper maps out in the field, just like they did in the old days. So that was a digital transition. Digital transformation using GIS would be how do I collaborate and communicate just like social media so that when I make a change in the field on a mobile device, on a map, it shows up in the office and it shows up in everybody's uh, Android device or iPad or Windows device. That's digital transformation. I like it. And you have a unique background in being in the utility space yeah. so you can appreciate the challenge of having utilities embrace a transformative mindset right. versus taking care of and protecting their c customers and ratepayers with more of an evolution right. mindset. That's right. So a, a, a good example is um, when I go to talk to a, um, a utility executive, I'll ask three questions typically. You know, what's your biggest problem? What are you doing about it? And how do you know what you're doing is really solving the problem? And this is, and so I asked a particular, I, this, I, I, this was a, good, a true story. I asked a, a CIO what uh, her biggest problem was. And she said, customer satisfaction. And she said in the last several years, customers have ri not rated us really highly compared to our uh, surrounding uh, utilities. And the board of directors was furious and she was asked to fix it. So I said, well, what are you doing? And she said, really three things. We're, we're uh, increasing our tree trimming. 
uh, you know, cutting down trees and all that to improve reliability, reliability, putting in smart meters, which will help the customers make choices and so forth, and sending all our call center people to a, uh, you know, charm school kind of thing. So I said, well, how do you, second question, well, how do you know that that, that uh, uh, change is going to, is really help? And she said, well, we hope so. And I said, well, that's really not compelling. So I said, have you thought about using social media and mapping techn GIS technology, not just to show what's on your, you know, where your polls are, but to take your customer satisfaction survey and, and grade it according to where people are going to be are really upset, because not everybody's upset at the same time. And then take tweets and, and geo-enable them and show them, wait a minute, is there a correlation between where people are tweeting in an un favorable way to customer satisfaction and really listen to customers and then take what you've done well maybe tree trimming actually makes people angry because that my experience is even though it helps reliability it doesn't people don't like the trees cut down I almost missed my flight coming out here because they were trimming the trees on the, on the highway to the airport and everybody's unhappy about that well so if you look at your history of tree trimming in GIS and your, your customer satisfaction and your, your social media and what we call mash that up together and come up with just a kind of a hot spot, you, you can say, okay, let's prove customer satisfaction, not by looking at the whole service territory, but going right there to where the con convergence of customer satisfaction, poor customer satisfaction, to social media that's saying, hey, we don't like what's going on, to what work you have done. And I can then uncover that, hey, you know, maybe you know, tree trimming is a good thing, but maybe we ought to deal with it in, in a much more uh, compassionate sort of way, communicate, collaborate with, with, uh, with the customers. So in that sense, that's a bit of digital transformation in kind of a smaller workflow, but a very important one of how we deal with customers. I think Paula Gold Williams talked about rate payers. You know, these are rate payers, but we don't treat them as customers. And if we really thought about them in a, in a certain way, or, or maybe we think about them in a certain demographic. I mean, some people may say, well, we don't really care about trees, or maybe a certain demographic, or a certain uh, pe you know, people's preference. So we could now take another layer, which might be what their um, income level is, and then we can, we can mash that all up. So we can begin to understand uh, what customers are really thinking and behave accordingly in a way that is, is transformational for utilities. Well, it's really inspiring to hear you have this perspective. I think if you look at the ways that the smartphone has been a platform mm -hmm. and actually a springboard right. to higher platforms and integrated platforms, the ability to open up knowledge and patterns yeah. to create things like Waze from Google Maps to right. create all these apps, that's a world that if we can get to, I think we can, we can get out of being reactive. Right to change, but actually embracing it and channeling in ways that are most um, most auspicious to those who could be greatest affected. That's right. Um, you know, it's fine for Uberfying taxi cabs, mm -hmm. but when you start to Uberfy utilities, there's a lot at risk. Yeah. So the ability for actually the utility to be in front of this and channel right. that transformation is key. That's right. And certainly your platform of the where is one of the three key components. That's right. You got to have the where, you need to know the when, what? yeah, and then I think it's the who who's going to do it, right? Yeah. And, um, so the other piece of it is the why too, because hmm. we did, and and there is the the notion of well, first of all, go, going back to the the notion of a platform, and um, you know, as I say, I'm in the GIS business, so I'll pitch a little bit of that. We've we've migrated from this idea of a a system or maybe a computer application or mapping a mapping application to a platform and again we use we, the cues that we've taken is from social media the notion of collaboration I like to say that that the, the, the there's three C's that this platform provides and this is a mapping platform or an other path communication collaboration and coordination in the case of, of a utility coordination is becoming really really important and and this notion of smart cities so what's the fun like you talked about where we, our, our tagline for our company is the science of where so uh, where things happen and I and I talked earlier about a situation where I always uh, when I was with the power company in operations would would dig a trench and we'd open up the street but we would have a habit of digging the street the day after the city paves the street. 
So this notion of, and, and, and there it's about where. Where am I paving? Where am I digging? Where am I putting in a water main? Where am I putting a gas main? Imagine instead if we put all these pieces together in a real-time immediacy kind of platform. Not wait two weeks or three weeks because that's what really happens in today's world. Just like we do with social media. When you post a picture on Facebook, you don't wait two weeks. You don't wait a, wait a day. You share that right then and there. That's really what a platform allows us to do, sharing right away. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just think that that's a really good thing for people to hold and think about. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I want to thank you for coming oh, and yes. giving this information. And I think we need this integrated in the path forward. Right. Both the science of where and when and why. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for bringing your My leadership pleasure. to this. And let's yeah. keep it moving forward. Okay. Yeah, so thanks again. We're at ETS Day 3. Great to have Bill Meehan here. Great. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.